Joining me now is the president and founder of the pro-Israel, pro-peace nonprofit uh, J Street, uh, Jeremy Benami. Jeremy, good to see you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me. We don't have uh, we don't have confirmation on a lot of things that are going on, but you you heard Hala's reporting. We seem to believe, and we have been told, including by uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, that the Israelis are at the negotiations or have been allowed to to participate in the negotiations in Cairo, which is very interesting because Hamas representatives will be there, and it's th those two groups are often not in the same city, let alone the same room, um, and that there has been a pullback of troops from southern Israel. Uh, Israel has announced, though it has not been confirmed, that more uh, openings for humanitarian aid will be produced. Uh, so I want to get your take on, on the news this morning. There, there does seem to be some movement of some sort. Yeah, all of this is the best news that we've had, obviously, over the course of these six months. And, and today does mark six months since the horror of October 7th. And I just want to recall that uh, you know, our thoughts are with the hostages who are still in the tunnels of Gaza 184 days later. Uh, there has to be a break in the fighting. Uh, we need to have a surge of humanitarian aid. Uh, we need to have an opportunity for a deal to be struck, hopefully in uh, Cairo, uh, at these current talks for the hostages to come out. Uh, there is no uh, military solution to this problem. There is only a political solution, and having some space for the diplomats to work things through is good, not only for a short-term hostage deal, but also to think about what is the plan for the day after the fighting. Let's speak about the hostages for a moment. It, I, I cannot imagine. I mean, I was, when I was there after October 7th and speaking to hostage families, uh, the pain was unbearable and that was a few days in. Uh, after all of this time, uh, they have tried in many cases to not politicize the conversation. But as of last week, the last uh, remnants of that are over. They, they've even joined protests um, against Netanyahu to say this is not getting solved. It's not getting they don't seem to be being prioritized and we're going to need a political solution. If for no other reason than to get those hostages out, um, it seems like Israel's uniting around the fact that Benjamin Netanyahu does not seem to be equipped or willing to do that. You know, look, uh, every poll tells you that 80 percent of Israel understands that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu should go. Uh, the really the only debate has been whether or not it is now or when the fighting stops. That unfortunately creates the political incentive uh, for him to continue the fighting. And that's why American pressure and what the president did this week is so important. Uh, it has to be understood in no uncertain terms that uh, United States support for the state of Israel is at risk if Israel continues down a path that continues to make the humanitarian situation the calamity uh, that it is right now. And so I think the days of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu are likely numbered. Uh, there'll be a moment of reckoning for the Israeli people as to the direction the country wants to go in their own free and fair elections. Uh, and one can only hope that the country will choose a different direction than the government and the policies that brought it the disaster of October 7th. There was an interesting uh, exchange, that, again, not confirmed, but it is, it is believed that Joe Biden said to Netanyahu on the phone when uh, telling him things have to change. He said, don't try to call me anti-Israel. Don't try to say I'm not a friend of Israel. And Joe Biden is on solid ground on that one, um, because what has happened with, with Netanyahu and, and the Israeli government is that's the, that's the charge that's been levied, sometimes against your organization as well, that if you are not in full support of all of Israeli's policies, Israel's policies all the time, you're anti-Israel. Hey, look, we're not in support of all of America's policies all the time. Uh, we're not anti-America. Yeah, and look, at that just doesn't work uh, with the American Jewish community. Uh, we, we've seen polling that 90 percent of Jewish Americans understand you can disagree with the policies of the government of Israel and not be anti-Israel. And let me say similarly that for many of the critics outside of the Jewish community uh, of what Israel does and some of its policies, uh, one of the risks is to be called anti-Semitic mm -hmm. immediately. Uh, and, and I just want to make it clear, the criticism of Israel, even opposition to Zionism itself, is not in and of itself anti-Semitism. And it's really important for us to draw these lines and make it clear that free and open discourse and disagreement and dissent is important and allowed. Uh, it is not the equivalent of anti-Semitism or being anti-Israel. Jeremy, always good to talk to you. Thank you for uh, being with us. Jeremy Benami is the founder and president of J Street. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.